And we're back in the episode of Flushing It Out podcast. We're, you know, we had three episodes in like four days. And now it was about two weeks off, maybe. But a lot's happened in spring training. Um, DeGrom continues to just embarrass every single professional baseball player who thinks that they could pick up a bat, um, which is awesome. Pete is hot. Lindor homer today. Lindor looks great in the orange and blue. McNeil's one for 19, but I really couldn't give a shit. That um, one was an absolute bomb to right field. Though. Yeah. Not in his first that, yeah, in his first at bat. bat yeah. yeah. It was an so, absolute moonshot. So a lot's been going on, really. Um, I mean, I think that Jacob deGrom will win a Cy Young this year. I don't think anybody is even close to being as good as him. All he does is throw – 101 mile an hour fastballs and then 94 mile an hour sliders. That's it. That's all he needs. Was, and then and, watching, and then he has a nasty changeup. I was watching today's game and it was just an absolute joke. Like this guy's just throwing 94 with mixing with 101 on the black, mixing in a filthy changeup that's sitting like 92, 93. But it's just stupid. Like he's just yeah. heads above point? everyone else. Yeah, it's at the point now where like. He's he's the only guy in the league where like every time he steps on the mound, you're expecting him to give up me at most two runs. Usually it's one. Unless like, we there's play no, the there's no other guy. He gives up five. Yeah, exactly. Unless we play the Marlins, but like, like there's just, and like those games are like it's a shock to us. Yeah. But, like the other top pitchers in the league, like they have games where they give up four. They have a couple game stretch where they do that. Degrom, he doesn't. Yeah, yeah there's ridiculous. no there's no stretch of like of like shit really. Last year he he. He had like two or three bad ones towards the end, but he made eleven starts. You know, yeah. And yeah. and 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 then this is kind of where I'm at. Where, like, if we're not going to buy into those eleven starts, why should we buy into Trevor Bauer's eleven starts? But well, I'm not going to get into mm-hmm. Bauer because we we could spend another whole whole episode now. No Bauer, no Bauer, yes. no Bauer. No yes. Bauer. Good vibes only here. Yes. Good vibes only here. It's been good vibes because we got Pete raking. Pete, dude, that his swing on that double hit was. Perfect. It was, like, it was, that, I was watching that. It was a missile. Like yeah. he's not just like getting hits right now. He's hitting piss missiles across the field. This yeah. guy went three for three today with the, like, you, he, he was like four for four on base, but three for three, every single hit he had was an absolute rocket. I was so happy. I was like, this is the Pete I remember when he first came up. Yeah. And the home runs will come with him, but the swing he took, when he drove the ball to right field, that swing was non-existent in 2020. And not that he's going to spray the ball to all fields. He's not that kind of hitter. He's definitely going to be that probably like low to mid bad average kind of guy with a lot of homers, which is totally fine. Um, but if he can get that swing back that he had in 2019 and be a more complete hitter, stay short to the ball, not, you know, because I remember like his biggest thing last year was like his, like he was dragging his hands or, or, or the barrel was lagging behind, you know, his body or hands or whatever was going on. It, it, his swing is completely re- not revamped, but he's almost turned back the clock to 2019, and everyone's even saying it. Like I've read some tweets and some reports about his teammates and Chili Davis saying, like, you know, this is the 2019 Pete Alonso, you know, m- more compared to last year. I mean, not having Chili last year, I think did do damage on Pete. I mean, his rookie year, he had Chili with him, and he went off for 53 homers. I mean, yeah. when that guy goes away that you're talking to every day, you're with him every day. He's giving you so much advice. He just disappears. You got to expect that there's going to be a little bit of a fall off. Pete had a big fall off until he got hot at the end of that year, but now like Chili's back, him and Pete are just going to be back together. I mean, I can't wait to see how nuts he goes the rest of this season. Yeah. Big bounce back year. Yeah, big bounce back year. I'm pretty sure I picked him to be the comeback player for the team, and then. Mm-hmm. The more I was thinking about it, like, that's so stupid because he was still on pace for, like, 40 homers, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, he was still on pace for, like, 45 homers, but we're all, like, yeah. over-exaggerating that he hit, like, 233 with, like, 50. Because yeah, it was, it was like his start was so bad last year. Like, it was really it was, bad. Like, it was, it was one atrocious. of those sophomore slumps, like, to an extreme. Yeah, it, was, it was frustrating. Yeah, yeah. but he, he picked it up in, second, like, the second half of a, a, sh- a short season. Yeah, yeah, no, I know what you mean. Um so yeah, Pete. No, you, really... Nico, you were Syndergaard. I was Pete because you guys gave me all the crap for not taking Noah. Oh, yeah, oh you're, you're, Noah right, guy. you're right. You're right. You're I right. took Peter. Okay. Okay. No, I, I I knew somebody took him, but yeah, I, I don't know why you didn't pick Syndergaard. 
because <laughs> you know sometimes i say so to myself weird. i can't ride them all i can't ra- be the biggest no fan of all time all the time that's fair <laughs> that's fair um i'm glad lindor hit a home run today i'm glad he's you know starting to feel it um i mean I don't know, like I, I tweeted out like I, I couldn't care if this guy went over 100 in spring training like because it, it it doesn't really matter with any of them I feel like every logical baseball fan sports fan and like any sort of preseason like you know nobody really cares about the stats um, but it, it's it, it's good to see that the main guys are starting to catch their groove a little bit the best thing right now though is he's starting to get into that groove as it gets closer to opening day like you see him you know today he had two hits He's starting to get his swing back. He's starting to be ready to go. He looks like the Lindor of 2019 and not the Lindor we saw in 2020. He was still a beast, but not the guy who I see two, hitting 285, 30 homers and like 120 ribbies. So. Yeah. Yeah. Do we – Um, what do you think about Alonzo being like too hot right now? Is that a thing? And that then, scares me. That definitely scares right? me. Right? Because like uh, – yeah. I mean, it could happen. But. We can't have nice things. Like, what do you think? I think Pete's going to just go hot the rest of this time. He yeah. goes in, faces Scherzer on opening day, and puts up an over. He go. I guarantee his stats in that first Washington series are going to be, like, two for 13 with, like, three strikeouts. Like, maybe he'll have a homer, but, like, he'll go, like, two for 13. Yeah. Yeah. I almost don't like he's hitting so well right now. And I remember last year, McNeil's spring training, like before COVID happened, McNeil's spring training was unreal. He was tearing the shit out of the ball. Um, and then COVID happened, and, you know, he kind of had a slow start too. But I don't know, that kind of worries me a little bit. Yeah, I like when guys yeah. aren't hitting that well in spring training. I mean, Jake, I don't get worried about. Like pitching, if you're hot, you're going to keep it up. Yeah. Like Jake, uh, who else? Uh Speaking of just great pitching so far, who's gotten so under the radar, our boy uh, Jordan Yamatomo. He's yeah. gotten eight innings, like one run. Like he's thrown the ball very well and put himself mm. right in contention to be on this 25 man. I don't think he will be, but he's fighting for it, which I'm impressed about. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll touch on him and, and the back end of the rotation a little bit. Um, but everything. I mean, like, most of the guys look good. I mean, how, how's Dom been playing, actually? Because I haven't really caught too much of him. Dom, he, yeah, I was watching. Uh, Dom going into today was, I think he was hitting, like, 133 um, with, like, two hits. One was a homer. He hit another homer today and hit a double, and I think he had – I think he might have gone three for three as well. But uh, the fielding is suspect at In best. Left. It, he it did expected. I mean, when Jacob Degrom gives up a run, you know everyone has to question what happened. Yet yeah. when you look at the when you look at the box score, it won't mention that Dom fade like you know he faded back to the wall, took his time getting there. Yeah. Then he jumped, and you know it's arguable. Did it go off the top of the wall? Did it go off the top of Dom's glove? I thought it looked like it went off his glove, but definitely something he could have had. Yeah, we need most left so fielders could have had. We need the DH so bad. Because I love Kevin Pillar. He, him and Alba, Alberto Mora have been playing very well for me, in yeah. my eyes. Because um, we also can't have Nimmo playing center. After that, after he had that um, big robbing the homer, he went straight away. And he was – because he said – Keith was saying on the broadcast, Nimmo and Dom are playing further back because they have a bad time tracking balls back. Right. which we saw with Nemo all season as he looked like he was running to a little styling. This year he's going all the way back. And he's starting all the way back, and he had that rob of a homer today, but it's hurting him when he's trying to come in on the ball. Him and Jeff almost had a massive collision, which could have gone so bad. But, you know, they're not looking – the defense isn't looking great. Pilar looks great in, right, in playing right field right now, but, you know, yeah. I'd love him around more in center. Well, Pilar is also not going to be that same guy he was with the Blue Jays making all those diving plays like six years ago, you know? No, like, yeah, he's like... exactly. No, exactly. But he's still – the him and Albert Elmore are probably arguably – are easily the two best outfielders we have defensively. And I'd argue Pilar might still be better in center than he than Elmore is. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that happening. Um, today, uh, today was the perfect example of what we're gonna have to deal with all year. It was one of those we're gonna watch, watch Dom 
mess it up in the outfield, give up like a homer like that, and then the next inning comes in and he gets a three run homer. You just gotta take it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's the new Dom. It's like Dom when he was like younger, like 2019. If that happens then, like he's just moping about it. He strikes out his next at bat. This is the new Dom. Dom goes Dom goes Yabo for well, a three run well, homer. He's he's been in the league for a little bit. He's probably matured. You know, he knows how to handle himself. I think it's also the Lindor factor. I mean, Lindor came up to him afterwards and was like calming him down. Big smiles on their faces. It was like Rojas, Lindor, Dom. They were all smiling about it. And Dom, it's a three-run homer. Right. I'm just gonna say everything that good, everything good that happens in this world accounts to four people: Lindor, Mikey, Jake, or Noah Syndergaard. <laughs> that's that's how you look at things. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I mean I think Lindor is gonna fit in great just with all like you know all the characters that we have on the team. Um, personalities. Yeah, the personalities. That, 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 that's what I was looking for. Um, I think he's really going to fit in. Have you guys seen any other reports about his uh, possible um, extension? Because I know that today, this is Today, I just saw today's. Um, it came out today. He, uh, Lindor said he hadn't really heard much from it. He knows his team has been talking to the Mets, but nothing extensive yet. So pessimist pessimist me says yeah, I'm how fucking hard is worried. It? How hard is it? Be, be like, dude, here's 10 years, 330 million. What do you think about that? Like, it has what? to come to wording. It has to come with like opt out. He probably wants an opt out at some point in case he's like, you know, five years from now when he's 31, 32. After he say he goes on the craziest five, five year stretch we will see in a while. Yeah. Imagine yeah. he goes on that stretch. He might want to go back at 31 and say, you know, I want another deal that's big. I would be fine with five or six years of Francis Fulendor. That would be okay with me. Yeah, for what like to, I mean, of course, like I'd like cool forever. I mean, I would like forever, yes. But for what we gave up for him? We, yeah, we, same here. Mind. Same here, of course. You know? There's been no word on Mikey, which has worried me. Dude, he's not going anywhere. He will stay with the Mets. Him, I'm not worried about. Lindor, I am more worried about. There, there's no other place that, that uh, Conforto will go. I Like, why would he want to go anywhere? He's like the cornerstone of this team. I don't know, but it worries me. Well, it, it, it is a little worse. There's no, there's no talk even about it. If like if there was communication between uh, Conforto's camp and the Mets, like I'd be like, all right, you know, it's going to be fine. But given there's no communication, I'm like, what's going on? Please just offer him something. Offer him the world, please. Yeah, but doesn't that there's no talk almost be like they're so confident that they're going to resign him that they're not even worrying about it right now? Yeah, but don't you think that upset Conforto? If you're Conforto, uh, wouldn't you be a little bit upset about, you know, they're not reaching out to you, but this new guy they brought in, I've been a part of your roster since I'm 2015. I went to the World Series with you guys. I've been an all-star yeah. for you guys multiple times. Like, I, I want to hear from you guys, too. Like, I'm a homegrown guy. You guys drafted me. Like, maybe get in touch That's at the point. same time you're talking to Lindor. Don't go one than the other. I think you work at both simultaneously. Yeah. That's a good point. I don't know. There has to be a reason. He, wait, he, oh, isn't his agent Boris? It's Boris. It's Boris, which scares yeah. me even more. But Mikey has said, like, I don't, I know my agent is Boris, and like, we don't do, he doesn't really do extensions, but he's like, I'd like an extension. So, yeah. But he I said mean, he wants an extension. Then just get it done easily. Just bang that out of the way. And then you spend the last 15 days sitting there, locking Lindor's agents in a room and not letting them leave until you have a deal. Get Mikey done, get the easy one done, and then get the hard one done right as you go into the season. Think of the mojo we'll get on opening day if we're like Lindor's a Met for 10 years. Yeah, it would be, it would definitely Fan be. Fan base might feel. explode. Fan base might explode. It, it would definitely be a different feel among like the fan community. It, it would be, a, it would be a sense of like assurance that like we're set, you know what I mean, in multiple areas for a long time, which we never get that. Exactly. I mean, we. Uh, I just need something. It'll just know. extend at least two people before we go into the season, and I'll be happy. I think something will be done. I, I don't think both. I really don't think both, but I think something will be done. Um, I, know. I, sneaky think, I sneaky think this isn't just me being the fanboy. I sneaky think we might extend Noah. I don't know what it what is. I just, have a, I just have a feeling we might get him for really – like not even like a long-term, like a three-year extension. Mm-hmm. Give him another shot to prove himself so he doesn't have to go back into the market with like half a season under his belt. Yeah. I could see Sandy working and building something like that. I would be fine with that. That makes I'd sense. Be, yeah. I, I, I think we'll get something. Um, but 
something else I want to know is what uh how are we feeling about Edwin Diaz? Is he uh is he a closer? Do we trust him yet? I, I'm still 50 50 whether I trust this guy because he hasn't he only thrown like three innings so far. It's a strike training. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but oh, he's bad. looked absolutely filthy. He's looked the nasty. way I don't think he's given up a hit yet. I mean, he's yeah, he's nasty. I heard Clem talking about it on his podcast. Yeah, I'm with him. I have full confidence in him. 100% confidence. 100% confidence. He steps wow. out in the mound. I have the confidence he's going to end the inning. Do See, I think he should be a full-time closer every day, like set in stone? I don't know. I, I feel like he's better when you're not. It's not set in stone. You just like you just you just go with the flow of the game. Whenever you feel like putting him in, you need him in a big spot. You put him in. See, I'm not there yet. Where it's like if it's a two-run game against like the Braves, I'm like not. I'm not. I'm like. I'm like. I'm like 60% confident he can finish the job. I'm like a little more than 50. I think I said 50 50, uh, like two seconds ago, but I think I'm a little more than 50 50 because his stuff is amazing. Yeah. You know, he throws 100 with like an, ama- like an incredible slider. And as a closer, that's all you really need. You, you know, I don't know. I think going 100% is really ballsy because he's going to have his fucking yeah, in him. moments where he. Okay. All right. Winjo, what about you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I hear. Is that as loud as it goes? I I can't figure out how to get louder. Oh, there you go. There you go. Okay, it's loud now. Oh, here we go. Yeah. I want him. I want him on the mound. Game seven. Put him out there. Wow. Yo, let's go. Let's the go. Song, I, I was with me. The song is song is just too. It's too. It's like if I hear that going out there, I don't think anyone's getting a hit. Dude, I mean, it's just untouchable. The first, like the song alone is uh, untouchable. I mean, his stuff's re- his stuff's untouchable too. But the song, untouchable. Dude, imagine Game Seven of the World Series. I, 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 I'm about to get goosebumps thinking about this Mets Yankee Subway Series. All the like the Mets are up by a one. All of a sudden, you hear those goddamn trumpets blasting through the stadium. I might lose it. I might lose Dude, it. Dude, the stadium would collapse. You got. You got glass case judge and stand coming up with like Glaber Torres behind them, and he's gonna pump fastballs by them. And no, he's gonna what? throw the side piece nonstop. That side piece has become well, incredible. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, he threw the side against, piece like nine times. Against we're like jam- judge we're and jumping stand. on the mound. Against judge and stand, all you gotta do is, is throw alone away sliders. But against Torres, like a high, like like, like, like a high and fastball, he just blows away. Game over. Uh, Put it in the books. Oh, dude, God damn it! I'm I, I'm really all in on Edwin. I'm on Edwin. I'm I became an Edwin guy. I don't know what it was. I hate him a lot, but I'm now an Edwin guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm not there yet. I just once he blows his first save, like I might be, I might tweet out like I'm off the Edwin Diaz train, and then he'll <laughs> get like saying. super that's, hot. That's why I can't like hop on hot. yet. That's why I can't hop on yet. I just cannot do it. But but I do like that he's still a Met. I think he will figure it out. I just need to see a little bit more. Not much more. I, I see a little bit more. Um, and then if he can, dude, if, if you can have DeGrom, Stroman, Carrasco, Syndergaard in the rotation, like a highly effective Edwin Diaz and Seth Lugo when he comes back with Trevor May and, and that lineup, dude, like that is a World Series caliber team. Like there's no question about it. And I think the team could easily be better than the Braves. Like w- once they get yeah. rolling, you know what I mean? Like they, when the full lineup is played, like they look so good. Like and, this team just looks so good every time they step on the field. And and I know everybody wants to fondle the Padres nuts and all, but like I think the Mets could easily beat them in a seven game series. Maybe not easily, but they could definitely, definitely beat them. They are not be a top as, series, but I could see it. I could yeah, see us definitely beating them. Absolutely. Like like Cosmer is not better than Alonzo. You know what I mean? Like Tatis and Lindor are neck and neck for best shortstop in the game. You know, you know they, they definitely have the edge with, with uh, Machado. He, I mean, um, Guillerme though. Guillerme Machado, I, I don't see a difference. Guillerme, what are you talking about? That, that's not how you say it. No, did you see SNY? Yeah, did you see Guillermo. SNY? Isn't it Guillerme, Guillermo? I don't know. Guillerme. I, just, I can't pronounce Guillerme. Guillerme. Yeah, Guillerme, Guillerme, yeah. Guillerme, Guillerme. Did you see SNY the other day? They're like, who just started third? Guillerme or um, yeah. J.D. Davis? I, I voted J.D. Recent's just been like, I did too. But I mean, I just love Luis Guillerme. He's just the character and a half. I used to hate him because, like, I saw him as like, oh, here's this bum that the Mets are going to start to troll out in the field. Exactly. But now he's Dude, like, if you 
Yeah, if you said to me in 2018 or 19 that Luis Guillerme was going to play a big role on possibly a, like a, one of the best Mets teams since 2000, I would say to you, just shut up and leave and just don't talk to Met, to me Mets ever again. And now I, he's like slowly morphing into one of my favorite players because he's just so fun to watch. Yeah, he's pretty. Yeah, he's pretty awesome. Um, I mean, just having him as like a defensive replacement, knowing that defense is our biggest weakness, most likely, um, is, is big. Our late game defense is gonna be very good. Yeah, yeah, uh, agreed. It definitely will be. Um, so it's I mean, damp the mood. Is anyone worried about Carrasco though? Oh, I meant to bring that up. Yeah, thank you. I forgot about that. I don't see. I I, I don't know. They all seem pretty positive about it around the yeah, Mexican. Like info. Like, think like yeah, it's vague. Info it's it. it's like the super vague Mets from back in the old days, but it's just Carrasco. Everything I've read is he's done this though, but before in Cleveland, like he would take a lot of time to get ready for the season. And then his first few starts, like he won't go deep. Like he basically treats them as spring training, but like in a big spot. Like he'll probably do like two spring training starts and then in the first few starts will be like probably only five maybe six innings. So, I mean, I'm not worried, but at the same time, elbow always scares me. So the only time I'll be concerned is if he steps on the spring training mound and he gives up like seven runs in two innings, then that would bother me. But if he's just out there pitching, like gives up a few runs or maybe he pitches like, you know, shut out like inning or two, like, then I'll be all right. Like the dude, you know, he's, you know, he's getting the rust off or whatever it is. Like he's getting out there. Um, but I mean, Rojas doesn't seem to be concerned. Like, Unless, you know, they're hiding something. Um, but there's really no way of knowing. Yeah. It's, you know, it's not, like, something I'm, like, super worried about. But it's something, like, I've been keeping my eye on every time I see something pop up. It's, you know, it's always some, it's it's always a read because you always want to see what's going on. No, yeah. And he, he'll, he'll play a big role in the team. Huge. Dude, I think that he was a throw-in in that trade almost. Like, he's not. But, like, in the grand scheme of the trade, he was a – dude, <sighs> Cleveland needs to – Look at Rosario that, today. What, yeah, Rosie played center. Rosie yeah, played center. center today. What? He's made yeah. three errors in spring training. He's atrocious. <laughs> three He's errors terrible. for six unearned runs in the for, at playing, in, yes. playing center. Oh, yes, and no. like most of them, he's been playing center mostly behind Shane Bieber, and most of those runs are coming off Shane Bieber, and he's pissed. Like Dude, I love please. it. It's so funny to me. The Indians. I think the Indians might be an absolute train wreck this year. They might be the worst team in the league. Like they are going to be. Bad. No, no, they're not going to be that bad. They still have Jose Ramirez and I. Ramirez Bieber. will be tra- Ramirez will be traded by the deadline. The deadline. Bieber mm-hmm. will be kept, but Ramirez is gone. There's no way he's going to stay. I just feel bad for Zach. Like he's so unlucky. Like the guy, the guy who like replaced him with the Mets was in the trade with him, so he can't even play shortstop. <laughs> yeah, with the, the poor guy. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. There's so much yeah. talk that the Indians were going to flip him to Cleveland, not for to Cleveland to Cincinnati, but it just never materialized. Like I thought him in Cincinnati would have been perfect. Like he would have been a great fit. Yeah, yeah, that makes but, sense. You know. he was Rosie, a top prospect. Number, number one two. prospect in the league. No, he yeah. finished up was he number, uh, number one? one at one point. Yeah. yeah. Who who, who, who are we talking about? What prospect? Rosie. He was number one prospect in the league. And yeah, yeah overall. It was I'm one in, or two. Yeah. He, he used to be. Yeah. 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 He used to be one or two. In the entire MLB. I, I don't think that's MLB. true. Yeah. No, it's it is 100%. He was when temporarily you guys, the number one. You guys got to show me that one time. But, I mean, I, he was good, but, like, he just he, just, was, he, he just he, wasn't the elite shortstop they needed. He never materialized. Yeah. But there's some question marks in terms of extensions, Carrasco. Um, last thing. When Jeremy brought it up before about Jordan Yamamoto, I, I think that's how you say his name. But uh, a new boy, he's became my boy ever since now. He's your he's your guy now. I don't know. I just like when he pitches. I like his glove. His glove just looks like really cool to me. Okay, I can see that. Um. So yeah, Jordan. I'm sending you the I'm sending you the rosy thing right now. Okay. So between Jordan Yamamoto. David Peterson and Joey Lucchesi, who do we think by the end of spring training? We said March 31st or the 30th. Um, who do we think is going to be in that five spot? Uh, it's tough for me. I mean, 
I liked my boy, Jordan Yamatomo. Like, I think he should – like, I think he's pitching great, and I think at some point this season he will be our number five starter. Um, I, I think it's going to be David Peterson, though. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think – Numbers-wise? I think it has... Yeah, numbers-wise, Yamamoto has been the best. I mean, eight innings, I think he's given up, like, one run. I yeah, think. eight innings, one run. So he's been the best, but I don't know. I feel like they're just gonna ride with Peterson. I feel like I haven't seen Lucchesi pitch at all. Like, is he that just four me? innings? Okay. I I think there's no chance Lucchesi gets it. Mm-hmm. Um, is Lucchesi a bullpen guy? We think. Do we think maybe he's gonna be like a long reliever? I would be fine with that. They're gonna need like it. in a Seth Lugo kind of role until they're gonna Seth need help. gets back. Well, he's not. He's not gonna be a Seth. Well, not though. Seth. You know what I mean. But like a guy who can go long, like long term. Like say, say Carrasco, the guy I just mentioned, is right. you know in those first few starts, he can only go four innings. Like you go Lucchesi fifth, fifth, sixth, and maybe if he's dealing with the seventh, and let go a nice bridge to May and Edwin. Like who knows? Yeah, I can see them using him there. I'm just not sure. Like, has he done that before in his career? Because I'm pretty sure he's normally I think like a back in the rotation minors. starter. I think he did in the minors for a little bit when they sent him down. The Padres sent him down. Okay. I don't know. I have, I have thought enough. That's, what do you say? I just thought of something else I want to ask after this. After we oh. about this. I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, I, I mean, I think we all agree that Peterson's going to get it. He um, should be. Yeah. And, I mean, look, if he struggles, the, like, they'll probably give him, like, five or six starts, you know, and then if he's struggling, they might make a change. Um, but, I I mean, I, I really like David Peterson. I think he's a like a real solid four or five. His VLO is his VLO from up. last year to this year is up not just like a little bit. Like he's up like four to five miles an hour. He's up from ninety last year to like ninety five. That's awesome. That's good. Yeah, I think he'll get it. They'll probably make some changes. Peterson maybe Peterson becomes that long, you know, that extended arm out of the pen. I could see him in the playoffs coming out of the bullpen for like two or three innings. Kind of being like, uh, like what Bartolo was in 2015 playoffs, or like Syndergaard. I could see that mm-hmm. happening. So can I get my last my last point that I just thought of? Because yeah. you know we've yeah. been talking about so much good stuff so far. I wanted to bring in something bad. You yeah, know, a little rant. Has to be, yeah. Can we please get fucking rid of Dylan Batanzas and Jerry Samilio? <laughs> I can't watch them do this anymore. Like, they're just fucking I haven't dogs. even seen them at the pen. I totally forgot. Oh, honestly, you I haven't them. seen them? I watched them today. They're absolutely fucking abysmal. Like, they're bad, bad. What, what? They like, Jerry's stuff, Jerry's stuff, like, kind of looked good. But you know what? He can't get the ball in the strike zone. Like, he just – he looks like he's never pitched before, and he's just trying to <laughs> guess where to put the ball. And then Batanzas, on the other hand, guys – I mean, I swear to God, guys from Joe's are definitely throwing harder than Dylan Batanzas is right now. <laughs> like, this guy is throwing absolutely nothing. This guy has a wet noodle for an arm. Is he even I'm touching just, like 92 right now? No, he's barely touching 90. He hit 95, like, two ga- two games ago. I'm like, all right, Dylan Batanzas is fucking back. Here right. we are, two games later. He hasn't gotten past 92 since. Like, just get him off of my – my roster get him off the planet get him out of baseball i don't want to see this guy on the mound in any big game like it could be the fifth inning guys got to come out a little early high pitch count if you put in dylan batanzas louis rojas i swear to fucking god i'm just gonna turn the game off and just hope for the best because i can't watch that i hate him so much i hate watching him he gives me anxiety it's rough he's so bad he's just so bad same with jerry's like yeah Send him to the moon. Please, just send him to the moon. Maybe he got, like, the yips. You know, he was dominant, you know, back in the oh, day. Oh, yeah, he was dominant, and then he gave up the Gillespie homer, and the, he's just been terrible ever since. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I don't want to see him anywhere. I don't want to see him in orange and blue anymore. Just get him away from me. Well, send him both, back to Oakland. Just aren't they both Oakland. coming off this year? I hope. I, I hope so, but why would they even risk but, them in a big season? Potances definitely is out of here after the season. His contract oh, yeah, is he's up. gone. I'm not sure I don't even know about Jerry. So we, of course, Brody might have signed him to a three-year deal. Who, who fucking knows? I, I think, a, <laughs> I think it was a three-year deal. Yeah. Then exactly, just get rid of him and just get him out of my life forever. I don't need to see him anymore. The Gillespie game ruined him for me. Ever since then, I, I've just hated him. I don't, I don't want to see him. Yeah, I, I'm with you there. I, I, I've been on the fuck Jerry's fuck with Tansis train for a while now. I mean, this is just, yeah, that's my only issue so far with this whole spring training thing. Like the guys have looked good, but right now it's just. Get them uh, get those two away from me forever and ever. Yeah, 
I feel you. I mean, unless you guys have any other final thoughts, we'll probably uh, we'll probably be back towards the end of spring training. We'll do maybe like uh, maybe like end of spring training recap, and then like a night before opening day type of deal. Try to get you know. It's good to me. It just yeah. extend Conforto and Lindor. That's my final thought. If you don't extend them, I'm just <laughs> gonna extend lose. Conforto and Lindor for Wendy, please. Please, thank God for some time over the past week, a few weeks. Just so do it. Alf, any final thoughts? Just can't wait. That's it. Yeah, no, it's gonna be I'm so excited. much fun. They're, they're gonna be so August much fun 14th. to watch. Yeah, <laughs> we'll be there August fourteenth. Um, hopefully, we can connect with the Barstool guys um, and like uh, uh, be fun. meet up with them, talk with them for a little bit. That would be awesome. That would be so so awesome. Heckle, heckle Trevor Bauer until the guy can't even pitch anymore. Yeah, the guy's gotta walk off the mound. Or he's gonna he's gonna be shivered. <laughs> walking the city field next time he comes after that. I'm going to be there for both, so he better be pitching one of them. <laughs> Wait, you, you, you're going to two out of three games with them? Yeah, No, I'm going to the first one of the series. Yeah, the Dodgers series, I'm going to the first one, then I'm going to the second one. And at that point, I might just say, screw it and buy the tickets for the third. Who knows? <laughs> uh, any They're chance to see Trevor Bauer? Yeah, I just want to heckle Trevor Bauer. I will sit anywhere just to <laughs> scream at him for like That's three fair. hours. That's I my. Res- I respect it. So yeah, so we'll be, we'll be there in August. I can't wait because you know I haven't been to a Mech, uh, game in over a year, so it's gonna be awesome being back at City Field. Yeah. Um, but until then, uh, we'll be back for a little spring training recap. I'll see you, boys. Yeah. See you.